In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can get started building with Hume AI. Hume AI, you might be familiar from when they went viral a few months ago before the GPT-4 Omni demo. Hume AI has been making some waves lately. What's the first step you're gonna show? I'm gonna be showing in this video how to get started with their new Next.js template. The thing that's impressive with Hume and how they've developed all of their offering is it really is a voice first and what they're calling empathic voice interface. It gives you a great way on how you can get started on leveraging some of these voice models. I'm gonna be showing you quickly what the template itself looks like, which I think they did an excellent job on how you can get started with integrating Hume within your project. To get started with the template, you can head on over to GitHub. You can pull down the repo. Once you have it pulled down, the only thing that you need to get started are a couple API keys. You can head on over to their console, click on API keys, and you'll be able to copy both of those values. And where you're going to be putting those is within the .env within the root of the project. So there's a .env .example that looks just like this. Just remove the .example and then paste in your keys and save them out. Now, once you have it all set up, you can click start call here. You have this nice component here where when you're speaking into the microphone, it's going to be registering that and show you that rendering visually. You have the ability to end the call. You can also mute your microphone, which I'll show you in just a moment. But I'll just pause for a second for it to respond back and you'll see what it looks like here. Fantastic. Oh, I got that visual component. It sounds pretty cool. Ending the call and muting the microphone are handy features. Can't wait to see the demonstration. As you see there, I just muted it. Now it isn't actually listening. I can walk you through a little bit about the different pieces here. As you can see here, you can see the different emotions that are being conveyed. It's nice with this template and a little bit of the trick on how this works and why it's so quick is with streaming it across the wire. And in this case, it's using a WebSocket. What's nice with leveraging WebSockets or WebRTC is you can send that information in real time. And then in this case, once it detects a silence or that you've stopped talking at that point the server already has all of that information it can transcribe that text it can send it to an llm and then it can also send it to that text to speech model all within a relatively short amount of time now the thing that's interesting with hume is that it can actually detect the different degrees of emotion within your voice it detected concentration interest and determination and then as it was responding back it was able to give me the various metrics of interest, calmness, amusement, all of those different intonations that we got back from the voice. Now, there is a ton of interest in developing voice interfaces right now, especially after GPT-4.0 and their demo. It was really focused on that voice capability. What was interesting with that is it was able to detect the emotions within your voice, and it was able to, in kind, respond back with the different intonations of the different emotions that were conveyed. What's nice about this is you have a full Next.js template that you can play around with. They also have really comprehensive docs. It's always nice to see companies open source templates like this because this is really the way that you can bootstrap developers. Well, it's nice to have some really small examples. Sometimes it's also nice to have these more comprehensive examples where someone could just take this project and start to quickly iterate on it and build out whatever they like. It has a really nice structure in terms of the project. It's really what you would expect with a Next.js application. You can find all your various components within here. There's a couple of utilities within here, but primarily it's going to be within the components folder that you're going to be changing out the different values and whatnot. Now, the thing that's also interesting with Hume is they also offer some things like being able to integrate other models. You can integrate GPT-4.0, you can integrate Grok, you can integrate Claude. And they also have a really great playground as well. So you can go ahead, start a call with the configuration of your custom setup that you have configured within here, and it will stream back just like that Next.js starter kit that I just shown you. Now, in terms of their documentation, there's also quite a bit within here. And another thing that's really nice to see is they do also have tool use. If you want to talk to this model and then subsequently use some sort of tools, being able to leverage voice like you had just seen, in addition to using tools, it can give you and open up all sorts of different experiences. In the context of a web app, we're not really used to talking to websites, but this is a new sort of frontier that we can start to explore, right? You can imagine landing on a website and just start asking for things. Say you go to Uber and you say, I want to order a burger that has sweet potato fries and whatever, right? You could imagine talking into your microphone on the Uber Eats website 
and then maybe it quickly spin that up and then you can just talk through the steps rather than using your mouse or keyboard or something to that effect. I think it's really interesting to explore this type of thing. I'm definitely going to be digging into a little bit more and see what sort of examples I can potentially build out that could be interesting. But overall, they've done a great job in terms of their playground that they've built. And then also in terms of offering these open source starter kits for developers. Now, one last thing that I wanted to show you in case you're interested is just to show you how this works. If we go ahead and inspect this here, and then we look into the network requests here. So I'm going to refresh the page here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear it out. And then as soon as I click start call here, we'll see that we have a WebSocket that has been established here. And if I click that WebSocket, and you can do this on your end as well, and then you click messages, you see all of the messages that are being sent across in real time. It's converting that voice, it's sending it across as binary. And when I take a pause, you will see that it will respond back with a JSON payload within this WebSocket stream here. So I'll just pause for a second and then we'll see those come up. So, You're showing how the website. So I'm just going to end the call there and then I'm just going to cycle back up to the messages here. And then you can see how this works. So it's constantly sending your information across the wire. And then at the point that it detects a silence, it's going to go ahead and do the subsequent steps on the back end where it's going to be sending it to an LLM or using WebSockets or WebRTC is all of that data is going to be at the server as it's being streamed across. You can imagine this potentially in a video context or an audio context. Instead of waiting for that audio just to be sent as a big payload potentially, this way you're able to save on the latency and it might only be a couple hundred milliseconds, but all of that starts to add up, especially if it's an application like this and it's talking back to you in real time and trying to emulate like a human having a conversation. I think we're going to definitely be seeing a lot more applications that are both voice-based as well as using WebSockets or potentially WebRTC like we saw with the live kit announcement if you caught that. But that's pretty much it for this video. I encourage you to check out the template, play around with this. If you build anything interesting, put it within the comments below. If you found this video useful, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Otherwise, until the next one.